All right, so here's the uh, Ford Ranger, right? Ford Ranger, four cylinder, uh, 2.3 liter, four cylinder, 2003. So right now there is a, uh, here's the water pump, this pulley right here, there's a leak. So I need to replace the water pump. If you look here, it's pretty tight. You know, there's a, a power steering reservoir right here. There's, let's see, I could barely get my hand that's in here. It's not my full width of my hand. It's more like maybe three fingers width, like three fingers width. Uh, but the good thing is that if you look at where the fan is, the fan actually, between the blades, there's actually some space. So I should be able to uh, pull this, everything out here without taking anything apart. So I looked on YouTube. Uh, I saw how people were doing it. Basically, they were, they, they for the most part, they took off the, uh, the fan shroud and the fan. Or actually, some of them didn't even take it off the fan. They just took off the fan shroud and uh, right here, so they, it gives them more space. I'm gonna do this without taking off anything. Uh, and let me show you how. Uh, right now, the way it is, some people were saying, oh yeah, all you need to do is reach in, you know, because there's those three bolts right here. One, two, and three. You go, oh yeah, just unscrew that and this, uh, uh, you know, leave the belt on to to hold that uh, that pulley to unscrew it. But you know, I I tried it and it didn't work. It just that belt just spun, and the, the not the belt, excuse me, the yeah the bell, the bell spun, but the belt uh, just stayed still. So it was basically not enough for grip. The belt didn't have enough grip to uh, to hold hold everything in place. So let me show you a trick what I what I'm doing, and I'm able to take it off, and how how I'm gonna rotate each each bolt. To the way it's a little bit closer to me okay all right so there's the uh let's, let's get to focus come on focus man focus so anyway so so there's the uh, bell housing of the pulley i, sh I should say um come on center let me see how good Okay, there we go. So you see the three bolts. So right now, let me show you, I'm, I'm gonna bring the wrench in there. Let me show you that how it spins. It spins on the belt. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, it's not, enough, it's not enough grip. So watch, watch the, watch the pulley doesn't move, but the, the but the, the uh, excuse me, not the pulley, the pulley moves, but the belt, the belt doesn't move. See that? See that the belt doesn't move, but the pulley moves. Okay, so so this is a trick that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys that uh, that will that could actually hold hold this pulley in place. Uh, and without again, I don't have anything off. Everything's still on, right? Everything's still on. So um, so so watch this trick that I'm gonna do. Okay, so let's go back to it again. So I already done this with these first two bolts already. So you can see uh, you see that these two bolts are loose. Same. So I'm able to spin the bolt, all right? And the bell's not moving. The uh, the pulley's not moving, so I'm able to spin it, all right? So this is what I did. All right back back to this again. Let's look at it. You see that the 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 pulleys, the whole pulley spins. See that the whole pulley spins and the belt doesn't move. So this is what I did to uh, to hold it in place and get access without having to remove my fan or shroud or anything. Get a long screwdriver, and the good thing is my screwdriver here is a uh, the shaft of the screwdriver is square a square shaped shaft. Just do this, right? Put the screwdriver against two two of the bolt heads to basically hold it in place with that because it's a long screwdriver. It leverage it. Now I could actually nope. See that? Now I could spin my bolt loose. So now basically all, all my bolts are loose now. All right, so that's loose. Let me loosen it up some more. This side too. And this side too. So, piece of cake, huh? So now all I need to do is uh, take the belt off. Um, to take the belt off, there's a belt tensioner. Uh, let me show you what a belt tensioner is real quick. So there's the, uh, oops, there's the uh, pulley again. Let me show you where the tensioner is, right? So you go back around this front side here. So there's a fan right there, that's a fan, right? 
let me use the screwdriver as a pointer that's the fan with the fan shaft right there with the pulley the belt tensioner is right where is it at oh here it is right here so this is the belt tensioner right here it's where my screwdriver head is right there so it uses a 3 8 uh uh 3 8 socket um uh, wrench put in here and you just uh uh turn the uh wrench uh counterclockwise and that should pull this it would take this uh, pulley here uh, away from the from the belt so it basically removes tension from the belt just do that let's see if i could do it with the, right now i'm holding the camera with one hand so i'm not sure if i could do this or not with one hand there we go that and watch the right see that i'm moving the pulley there so i'm taking tension off of it actually let me there we go that's a lot of tension off of it so now i could just basically pull the belt off let me see if i could balance the camera or not uh i'm gonna pull the belt off from for my uh, uh for my water pump i'm just gonna free it from the water pump end i'm not even gonna take the, the belt all the way off i'm just gonna leave it dangling over here to the side actually i could release the tensioner right here I'm just gonna leave it dangling over here because I don't need to, you know, I don't need to worry about it. Let me pull my, so I can pull my uh, socket wrench back out. Oops. Jeez. Okay, there it goes. So pull my socket wrench back out. My my uh, belt's off. Off the, uh, uh, off the, uh, the uh, don't know what you call it, the water pump. So I go back to this side. See that? So the belt off, right? Right here, the belt's off. The belt's off the water pump because all those screws are, or excuse me, those bolts are, are loosened already. So now I can just loosen the bolt by hand. I just reach there, reach in there by hand. Which actually, let me do that right now. So you guys can see that. I'm not the, I'm not the, uh, the tallest person, so I had to step on a little step to, uh, to, uh, to reach the, <laughs> the the pulley, so that's one. Right, that's one. Let's put this in a safe spot. Let's see where's the safe spot on here? Because I'm losing it on here. Let me just put it on top of the uh, put it on top of the um, the uh, manifold here. And let me put it up. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, that's a good spot right there. So that's one. so you see my engines are all, all wet right now because i just actually i have reached in here when it was before it was wet and it was so dirty that that's where all this grease is on my hand came from so i actually kind of hose it down and i sprayed sprayed this area with simple green to hose it down a little bit uh so that's where the wetness is but it's still kind of dirty though you know i mean i just hose it down uh, I didn't do any brushing or something like that. So anyway, so it, so now the bell, this pulley bell, should just pop right off. There it goes, pop right off. Like that. There it goes. Piece of cake, right? All right. So here's the water pump for the uh, for the uh, Ranger. So so this is a new water pump. So that's what it looks like. So I I pulled up. The bell housing, right? That's where it was attached like, like so, right? So pull that off. So I need now I need to pull the old water pump out. So before I do that, uh, let's look at this one, the, the new one, real quick. So it's like so. So all these belt-driven water pumps, right here, they have a weep. This is a they call it a weep, uh, a weep hole. So when you first put this in when it's new, it sh it'll leak from here for. Oh, I don't know, at least 10 minutes or so. Uh, then after that, it should stop. And that's normal. A lot of people think, think it's a defect, but it's not. That's normal. So about 10 minutes or so. Um, so anyways, that's what it looks like. The you know the shaft right here connects to the impeller. Uh, and when, when these things leak, they usually don't leak from the O-rings. There's supposed to be an O-ring in here. Here's the O-ring. 
Yeah, see that right there? There's the O-ring. So don't you, they no, don't normally leak from the O-ring? What they do normally leak from? I'm actually feeling my fingers across here. I can feel a little bit of some scratches on the mating surface. So hopefully that just slide in smoothly. If there's if there's like a little burr or something like that, it, it might cause it to hung up, get hung up, and then not I won't be able to push it in. But anyways, uh, but when they do leak, where it leaks from, it's actually it leaks from the shaft. Because the shaft here, you know, there's a seal on this side, and I think there's a seal on this side. But anyways, over time, because this thing keeps on spinning all the time when the engine's burning, over time, the shaft leaks, you know, the seals on the, on the shaft wears out. Okay, so this pump, water pump costs, uh, this water pump costs $46. So you can see the receipt right there, 46 bucks. Bottle of antifreeze, a gallon, 11 bucks. Um, anyways, so there's the, there's the new water pump. Let me pull out the old water, water pump. So one thing I've got to show, oops, it's upside down. <laughs> so one thing I've got to show, is the uh, so you you saw the uh, the three holes here for the for the pulley, but the pump itself is held with also three uh, three mounting spots. So there's one right there, one right there, and one uh, over over right there. All right. So with the uh, oops, with the pump here, look at it. So you actually see one right here. This one right there at the tip of my flathead. Uh, the other one, it's kind of hard to see, but it's, it's in there, you know. I mean, there's three of them, so so you need to remove those ones. So those ones are 10 millimeters, excuse me, eight millimeters. The, the pulley is 10 millimeters. So I need to uh, loosen those up. All right, so let's look at the water pump on this side again. Let's see, where is it at? It's right there. So you guys should see the, the three uh, bolts for it. So one is right, let's see, look at the tip, the top tip of my screwdriver, right right there. There's one right there. Other one is right, actually it's kind of hard to tell. It's right there, top tip of my screwdriver. And the uh, last one is actually right, let's see where's it at. It's actually right there, the top tip of my screwdriver. So, uh, so anyways, so I'm not sure if I could hold the camera and get my uh, wrench in there uh, uh, without obstructing the view. I don't think I could do that because it's pretty tight. I'm probably gonna have to put both hands in there. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna try and see if I can do that. And let's see if you guys can see my wrench right, right there. That's my wrench right there. So that's the top, the top bolt. That's how I am able to get my wrench from underneath, from underneath the. Um, let's look on this side. From underneath, um, you see my wrench right there, right in the middle. So I basically I went underneath the uh, power steering line right here. So right there in the middle, that's the power steering line. Uh, the you know, the what power steering pump is right here. So I actually. And you see my wrench is ran underneath there. So that's how I reached that top, the top uh, bolt, okay? So I'm gonna do this off camera because, you know, again, I can't hold the camera and uh, and wrench at the same time. And my tripod, uh, I can't I can't set it up where, you know, I, I get the proper angle. So I have to do it off screen. So stay tuned for that. All right, so basically I, I was able to reach all three bolts to remove the water pump from from underneath here, uh, basically I reached underneath, see where my hand is right there, and I actually even reached underneath the, the lower coolant hose down right here as well. So that, so this is the uh, lower coolant hose. So underneath, above my hand is the uh, power steering uh, line. And if I go below that, is the and that's uh, that's the the uh, coolant lower coolant hose. So I was able to reach my wrench underneath here, and I I was able to reach pretty much all three. Uh, all three uh, bolts from from down right here and right here, uh, and you see my hands are fingers are all greasy and actually there's actually some coolant on there or maybe it's water. But anyways, uh, so I was able to reach all of them. So they're basically all they're all loosened now, so I could actually go in there and just turn them. Um, you know, turn them by hand. Like this first one right here. To, you know, to loosen all the, 
loosen, loosen all of them up. So that's one right there. Let's put it up again here, right next to my other bolts. Oops. Make sure I don't knock anything out of the way there. Let me put these things out of a different spot. Put this up there in a different spot. Okay, so there's my bolts right in the middle. Let's go back in here. I got one bolt. Let's go down via the bottom here. Okay, there's my other bolt. I'm spinning. So that's the bottom bolt. There it is. And the uh, top bolt over here somewhere, here it is. So let's, we'll see how hard it is to take this thing off. If I could wiggle it off with my hands or not. So, because it's a, it's a tight fit, um, what you don't want to do is you don't you don't want to uh, cock, you know, get it cocked eyed, it's a third bolt. You don't want to get it cocked eyed where, where it won't, where it uh, jam itself up. So uh, actually, let's look at the new the new one real quick. So so this you know this surface up here, right around right here. That's what that's how it, it fits in. So when you're pulling out, if you don't pull it straight out, uh, you don't pull it straight out. It could let's say for example, it could cock die one way or the other way. That will actually wedge it in there, and, and you might not be able to get it out with your hands anymore. Uh, or what is, if that happens. Uh, what I suggest you do is you actually push it back in so that way it instead of being cock died it, it's it squares up again then try uh, pulling out um, so uh, so let's see what happens I'm gonna try that and see if I can do it and pull it out if I can't then uh, I have to try something else but for now let's try it this way first so I'm just grab the uh, the three mounting bolt let's pull this wiggle a little bit wiggling it well, that's, that's a very tight fit it's because because of that o-ring that o-ring is right there or in there that's why it's tight did i even move it Let's see did i even move it? it looks like i did not move anything okay so i think i'm gonna have to do it another way let me try it a different way let me uh, grab some more tools i might have to kind of pry it oh, pry it um uh, if, if you do pry it what happens when you normally pry it let's go back to this again Let's say what happens when you normally pry it is that uh, let's say you pry one side and uh, one side comes out, but that means this thing will go cocked eyed, right? So you can't just do one side of that. You do one side, and you have to go to the other side and, and do it so that way it, it it squares up again, and, and you slowly do it on each each side until it it comes out. Okay. So let me look for some tools to do that. All right. So let's look at it. Uh, let's see where are we. Down right, right there. So in here, what I did to be able to pull it out, is I couldn't, you know, I had to pry it open. So right in this spot right here of the pump, uh, where the the flange at the pump, where where the where the mounting bolt is right here at the tip of the head, right here, there there was a little bit of space behind it, between here and here, and I was able to put a uh, little pry bar into it. So I have one of these. You know, one of these pry bars here actually i use i use this end right here and this this is a um nary moving pry bar right i forgot what what the name of this thing is called i think they call it a what did they call this thing crow's foot or something like that well anyways it's in this pry bar I, so i stuck it right into this spot right here i went right into that spot right here and i just wiggle it wiggle it wiggle it against itself and i was able to get enough space behind the water pump so I could get my the same flathead screwdriver that I used to take off the uh, the the pulley bolt. I was able to get the get it just in there and I could kind of you know wiggle wiggle it on this side. Then I then I worked my way up up on the bolt on the top side where where you know where the where this this basically same thing here but but up on top on the top bolt. I wiggle it wiggle it wiggle it. Um so I wiggle those two. Alright so I wiggled it and over here on this side, uh, you can see 
where I took the, uh, I, I put actually, I put the, the bolts back in for the uh, the pulley. And again, I took my pry bar right here. That's the pry bar right here. I stuck it down in there, right behind the bolt of the of the of the pulley, right in there, right between the the uh, the bolt and the water pump housing itself. And basically, I, I brace it against the the engine right here. So you see what what the barcode is right above there. Uh, this spot right with my pointer. So I brace the pry bar right against here, and I basically, since the pry bar is sticking out, you know, sticking out like so, I was able to push the pry bar like that. So basically prying it. So basically, I, I was able to get. Uh, let's go back to the. This right here, so I could show that as an example. It was I think it's like oriented like this, right? So I basically able to pry pry a little bit out right here, pry pry a little bit out right here. But when you do that, just one side. It comes cocktail and it doesn't come want to come out, so I had to buy this side. Or actually, no, it was it was off of this push uh, from from this side over here. I push pushed it, so so basically, I, well, I worked this side, worked that side, and I just came one back and forth, back and forth uh, until I had even more space, even more space for my uh, for my screwdriver to uh, to really get in there, right? For my screwdriver to get really get in there, then then when I really got the screwdriver in there, I got it towards to the base to where the Basically, where where the O-ring is, and that's where I'm at right now. And I can actually see the O-ring. I'm not sure you guys can see it, but the O-ring is right there. That little black band right there. That's the O-ring right there. So I got to that point. There it is right there. That's the O-ring. Oh, now it's cool looking out. Okay, I better put a bucket underneath here. I don't have anything underneath here, so let me go get that real quick and uh, do this. All right, so I got a little bucket or something tray to underneath to. Uh, Hopefully catch the auto coolant once I pull this out. I actually didn't drain the radiator. I'm not going to because uh, it's coolant. It's actually, uh, I, I'm using a long life coolant that's good for what is it, five years or, or 150,000 miles, whatever it is, 10 years, whatever. I don't know, whatever it was, uh, but long life. So I don't want to lose all of that. I'm just going to minimize my loss uh, from here. So hopefully I only lose like half of it instead of all of it by draining the radiator. Now I'm always out like should be able to wiggle this okay it's still kind of tight let me uh bring the uh, screwdriver in there one more time to to get it to get the o-ring completely off um as you guys can see that Let's, let me see, focus in that spot so you see the black band right there that's the o-ring well actually yeah uh, we'll see it's kind of partially off right there see that that's the o-ring right there so some of it's still on some of it's still off there we go. Okay. Let's see all that coolant coming out. I'm just gonna let it. I'm just gonna let it uh, drain out right there. I don't even know how many gallons is in this thing. I think if I can remember right, this thing is about two gallons. And my little tray holds about. Uh, the tray down here. My little tray down there holds about uh, is it nine quarts or ten quarts, so basically over two gallons of uh, of uh, um, liquid. Uh, yeah, it's good right there. Well, that's not even it's not even halfway yet. Uh, it's it's raining though. My reservoir went down. My overflow reservoir over there went down. Okay. So it's coming down, it's coming down. Actually, let, you know what? Let me take off those those three uh, those three bolts, uh, pulley bolts. So that way it shortens the length of this pump, the overall length. Because I might, I might hit the fan if I leave it in there. In there. So yeah, so basically I'm doing it this way. It just saves me a lot of grief as far as like taking all the everything else. That's the thing with with mechanical work, working on cars. It's really, it's not really difficult at all. It's very easy. The the only thing that's a pain in the butt is that usually when you have to get to something, when you have to get to something, you have to take a bunch of other stuff off. That's the part that I hate. I hate that. That's why I don't I don't like working on cars uh, because of that reason. And actually, that's the reason why I also don't like working on bikes too. Because at the same reason, it's like to get to the stuff that I want to work on, I take off a bunch of other stuff. 
and I hate taking the, all the other stuff off. Okay, so that's all off. Go down from this direction. There we go. Water pump. There it is. This old water pump. Spin it down. So there it is. There's the O-ring. Oh wow, look at this. The O-ring. Look, look, whoa, look at that. Look at this O-ring. Wow, look at that. The O-ring wore out. You know, over time the O-ring got stretched out. Look at that. It looks like it, it looks like you know, it looks like it's oversized, but you know, this is the original, as far as I know, this is the original water pump. Uh, this, this truck has 181,000 miles, but the O-ring stretched out. So some people, I think I saw another YouTube video where, where the person took it out, and they were like, oh, because someone put it in the wrong size O-ring, that's why it was like stuck, and they couldn't get the water pump out. No, that's not the reason why. It's, the reason why is the O-ring actually stretched out over time. It just, you know, it, uh, it, uh, it wore out and it basically it kind of lost its elasticity you know, let, let me look at this yeah you know it's not you know basically it wore out uh let's see where was this water pump leaking from it's hard to tell it might have been from the wheat pole so sometimes the wheat the wheat pole uh it's your indicator uh so usually when you when you put it in new the wheat pole will leak, leak a little bit then it stops then what happens is that the, when the wheat pole starts leaking again that's your indicator that the inside seal is worn. So because now, now the, the coolant is leaking past the inside seal. And this sweep hole, that's what connects it to. So that's another, I think, I believe there's another seal, an outside seal here, but usually that one's not worn yet. Uh, but usually when that that's wears, because uh, there's a bearing in here. I'm not sure if there's one bearing or two bearings, you know, one on each end, if, or it's just one or whatever. But but usually when that by the time that happens, this thing won't, uh, this, uh, the sh the shaft here won't won't be spinning where it should be. It it will actually wobble in inside there. So that's that's actually really bad. Uh, so anyways, so there's the old one. Let me clean up my hands so I could touch the new one because I don't want to get all this grime on on the new one. So so I'll be right back. All right. So there's the old water pump. It's a new one. I had touched it before with my grimy hands, so there was a little bit of greasy spots here and there. So let me. At least, at the very least, clean the mating surface so that way there's no greasy grime. Okay, so there's a new water pump. I have the new o ring in here. So, what you should do, you could do two things one of two things you could either put some coolant on this to help lube it, which yeah, you could do if you, uh, or you could use silicone grease. I rather use silicon grease because with the silicon grease, it's you know it's it doesn't just dry off really easily like uh like the coolant you know you put the coolant on there it's gonna um what's gonna happen to coolant on there is that you put it on there and it wipes off really easily so so uh, it's actually better to have to use the silicon grease so you want to use silicon grease not uh, not ball bearing grease or any other other type of grease because silicon grease is you know it's compatible with basically with water. It's what coolant is, right? Coolant is 50-50 water. 50-50 uh, water and whatever coolant chemical they use. It's usually, uh, I think, I believe it's some type of glycol or something, glycol. Uh, I forget exactly what it was. Uh, anyways, put it on there like so. And it fits just nice and just right, right? So it's not all oversized like the old one. Remember the old one? It was all like oversized. And the reason why it's, it's oversized is because the, the old one get, over time gets old. And it basically it's stretched out. That's what basically what happened. Alright, so now I can slide this in. The orientation I believe is something like something like like this. I think. Something like that. Uh let's see, let's see, let's look at this one. So the weep hole was uh Yeah, it was something the weep hole was towards the bottom. Right. Oh, I can see all the scratches from my uh, from my uh, pry bar. So yeah, so something like that. So that means this one is gonna be something like that. Yeah, like that. So the yeah, so the weep hole is towards the bottom or near the bottom. It's actually it's not actually like this. It's actually kind of like that. I think something like that. But anyways, uh, let's get this in here. All right. So before I do anything in here. So let's kind of focus down here. Uh, I need to clean the mating surface. 
of you know of the engine side i see a little bit of grease here and there so i'm gonna reach in there and clean that out Let's see i could do this without getting grease or getting dirtiness inside where the where the coolant where the uh coolant would be so I'm actually wiping away Yeah. Dang it, I can see freaking grease all over, or debris, I should say. Debris of grease all over the, um, where my coolant is, god damn it. I was trying not to, not, for, not, for that not to happen. But, it happened. Well, let me, I can't do this with one hand, I need to do two hands, so I'm gonna be off camera for a minute. Alright, so, I have my, uh, my, uh, Water pump right there. You see the hole for it. Uh, this in here. So I can do this with one hand. Again, always working with one hand. Okay, it's, it's about that spot. I'm just gonna wiggle back and forth. Back and forth. There we go. It's in there. So it's not, it's not all the way in, but it's. I think it's pretty much in there. So the weep hole's on the bottom. So that's the weep hole right here where my thumb is. Uh, you see the top, the top hole, right, right up there where my thumb is. The uh, the right hole, the yeah, driver side hole, and the, obviously the passenger side hole. You can't see because it's on the other side. But anyways, I think I'm pretty close to being uh, having the proper alignment. Okay, so I think I, I just accidentally because I was holding it with one hand. I think I, my 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 right hand, the, my thumb actually hit the uh, the stop button. But anyways, so it's in. So hopefully the the mounting hole is in the mostly the proper alignment i'll find out right now uh so let's screw some bolts in and see what happens see if it if it if it uh threads right in or not let's see right there oh, it's starting right in yep starting right in so it's pretty much it's pretty much centered i think so i'm just gonna leave it loose you know kind of loose so that way i could wiggle it around a little bit i don't think i need to wiggle it around but you never know. Oops. That was one. This one's the one on top. So I kind of remember which which bolt was top, bottom, and you know, or I should I should say top, bottom. I should say uh, top uh, driver side and passenger side, just by the way they look. Like actually, I could tell. Um, so this one screws right into. It's kind of yeah, it's a little bit more difficult because I only I have my fingertips. I don't have my thumb on it, so it's hard to spin it without your thumb, right? And we are we are you know we are us us hairless apes. And the advantage we have over the hairy apes is that we have a thumb, an opposable thumb, to work tools. But when you can't have you're not able to use a thumb, it doesn't work very well. Let's see if I can reach that bottom one. Is that? Right there. There it is. Right there. Okay, that one I, I can reach my thumb, so it's all good. So this eight millimeter bolt, eight millimeter is pretty small, so you don't need that much torque on it. Uh, I would probably say all you need is about uh, it's probably about eight foot pounds, seven foot pounds, somewhere around there, seven and a half foot pounds, I think, for eight millimeter bolt. Seven or eight foot pounds. Uh, the ten millimeter bolt, you could go. Uh, I think you can go to like 12 foot pounds, I believe, with a 10 millimeter bolt, which is the uh, the pulley housing. All right, so those are in. All I need to do is just reach in there with my uh, wrench again and and tighten it up. Um, put my bell, my uh, the bell, the pulley bell back on. Tighten that up, and put my belt back on. Uh, I don't think I need to show you guys how to do that anymore. Uh, I think I think we're good. Um, and actually, and the thing that made this possible. Basically, I only, I only use a few tools, and the wrench that I was able to get in, get into that with is this one right here. It's a ratch, ratcheting, right? it ratchets, uh, and it's a pivoting ratcheting. 
So that's the wrench right there. That's this is the hero. This is the thing that reached in there. And the other thing that that made made it is um, this uh, long screwdriver with a square shank. Uh, this along with the the flathead to pry pry the the pump open. And obviously, I needed the uh, the three eighths for the for the belt, and also my little pry bar. Where's my pry bar? Here it is. So I have three of them, but the one that I used was actually this big one. The big one gave me the most leverage. Uh, so anyways, yeah, I think that's it. I'm not gonna film the rest because Because uh, you know, the rest is uh, pretty easy. It's taking it off was the hard part. Putting it in was, was, was what uh, It's easy, you know, once you got it got it out uh, the, the, the rest of it's easy Okay, all right. Thanks for watching All right, so uh, Everything's back in. You see it's running Look down there. You see how it's uh new new clean metal so that's new water pump right there so everything's good i filled up the uh coolant popped it up and it's gonna run until it until it uh it uh heats up you know gets the operating temperature and that will shut it down and just keep an eye on it real quickly uh supposedly the the weep hole is supposed to uh weep for the first 10 minutes or so and after that it should stop but I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything dripping out at all. So it's probably uh, fine. Everything looks good. Well, also a uh, good idea to uh, turn on your heater. So if you have air bubbles in the heater core or anything like that, it will it will uh, uh, burp out the air bubbles, and you check recheck your uh, your reservoir level. Make sure that it's topped out. That's it. Thanks for watching.